I want to welcome all of His Glory Nation as we continue our series in the book of Isaiah. Tonight we'll be in Isaiah 48. And as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living word of God, which is our Savior Christ the Lord. Okay, Isaiah 48, to put some perspective around it, these are uh, the, the, the Israelites were in uh, captivity in Babylon for their disobedience. Again, 70 years to the day. That's why God called Cyrus out of the Medes and Persians 100 years, to the, to, uh, 100 years before he was born to Isaiah who would give the decree to go back and build his holy city and bring the Jews back in the land. And um, so in this, in this passage in 48, uh, God is um, seeing the hearts of the Israelites. Again, it was their, it, it, the reason they were there in the first place is because they were not being obedient to his precepts and his commandments, specifically around the Shemitah and the law. So again, that's why it was 490 years, the penalty for not obeying the Lord in sin is seven times in the Torah. So seven times 70 is 490 years. So they went uh, 490 years or 70 Shemitahs uh, without obeying the Lord. That's why it was 70 to the day. And uh, the Lord was, uh, um, was going to have justice and, and, and judgment come down on them. And so, and that would also be two, uh, 10 Jubilee years. And 10 is the number of a um, uh, commandments or precepts or, or, or judgment. So uh, very important, all the numbers meaning things. So here the, the, the Jewish people were in the, um, in the land of Babylon and, the, and they had a good. They, were, they, they had uh, the food and water and all that. And uh, they're calling on the name of the Lord and, 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 and their voice, but they are not following the decree to want to go back to the God's city and do God's will. And that's the same thing that happens to us in our walk with the Lord, too. Are we just calling on the name of the Lord? Are we calling on God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and then just not, we're just doing it in word only? Or are we walking the walk? Are we doing the will of what the Lord wants us to do? The Lord wanted them to go back to his holy city, and he had a plan for them. And they were, they were being disobedient. They were honoring them honoring him with his mouth, not the heart. God wants the heart, and God wants us to take action. Take action to walk hand in hand with us, with him. We don't go ahead of the Lord and we don't stand on our, sit on our couch and eat Cheetos. We walk hand in hand with God and his purpose for his, his glory. We're going to see this in Isaiah 48. Let's get right into it. Hear this, O house of Jacob, who are called by the name of Israel. He's not saying that twice. Remember, Jacob is the people. That is the sin nature of through the tribe of Jacob. Jacob later became Israel. And, and God prevails, uh, so he made them a nation, the nation of Israel. And come from, forth from the wellsprings of Judah, Judah is the kingship, who swear by the name of the Jehovah, Jehovah is God in three, and make mention of the Elohim of Israel. Elohim, again, in the Hebrew means three, God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, but not in truth or in righteousness. They were just honoring with their mouth, not with their heart. They want obedience. God wants two things from us. He wants our heart as his number one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Your heart first, then your soul. Your soul is your DNA, is the essence of who you are. And when you get the love of the Most High God in your soul, it's in the DNA. Your sins are washed away. They'll be as red as scarlet, washed as white as snow, as, as uh, Isaiah says. God is cleansing us through the Son, Jesus Christ, so that we can be uh, born again with him in the heart. And then from that heart, he expects obedience to do what the Lord wants us to do, not do what we think is right, not to go on sinning. Follow the way of the Lord and it will go well for us because he is outside of time. He's going to show us here. He is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the, the Alpha, the Tav in, in, in the Hebrew, the beginning and the end. And he knows all things before they happen. So when he gives us on the right path, we know it's for him and from him, and it's for our best. We can't see. We are just in a three-dimensional or three-and-a-half-dimensional reality. God is in a multi, at least ten-dimensional reality. He sees the beginning and from, and from the end, and we have to trust him. Because we go back to Romans 8, 28. For we know, we don't know, we know that all things, not some things, all things work for the good, not the evil, the good for those who love theos. Theos in, is what Paul is calling it in, uh, in Romans. 
for those who love Theos, God in three, the supreme di the, the divinity, for those who love uh, Theos and are called according to his purpose. So that is a verse that we need to highlight in our Bible to know that whatever we're going through, if we have the love of the Lord, all things are going to work to the good. Those are called by his name and for his will. It may not seem like it, and it may look like a disaster to us at, in time, at the time, but God has a better way, and he's going to take that horrible thing that we see from our minimal three-dimension reality and turn it out into a blessing for his purpose, for his glory, and for his will. That's why we have to trust him. Praise his name. For they themselves, are they call themselves after the holy city, the holy city of Jerusalem. Again, uh, just to mention, this will be the first time in, since Israel has become a nation in May 14, 1948, that the, the president-elect, Donald Trump, has stated that he is going to change the U.S. Embassy uh, from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem and recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. That's God's holy city. So these people were, uh, the Jewish people in Isaiah were uh, uh, placating God with their words, but they didn't want to go back to the holy city. And that's my dream. I want to live in the holy city. I love the holy city. Why do I love the holy city? Because my God loves the holy city and what he loves i love as well there's just a supernatural glory when you walk through the streets of jerusalem when you go up and around where jesus walked and the, the, the feel of the shekinah glory the kavod of god around the mighty god the elohim the three call themselves and lean on the god the, the the elohim of israel the lord of hosts is his name jehovah a host jehovah again three Host is the military term of the Lord, that the Lord has it through his military, not only because of his uh, uh, strength in him, but also his heavenly realm of angels. He is, who, he is with us, is stronger than he was in the world. And we don't get to see that, that dimensionality that God's spiritual angels are all around us protecting us. But we got a, uh, we, we, we got a uh, image of it in, um, in, with Elisha. Uh, it's a long story short, in, in the book of Kings, uh, the, the, they couldn't figure out, the Syrian army could not figure out how they, they were getting the intel, inside intel on uh, going against Israel. Uh, and uh, it was God giving that information to Elisha. Then the Syrian army figured it out and they surrounded Elisha and his servant. And uh, the servant started to panic. The, the, the Syrian army surround us, uh, Elisha. And Elisha says, relax. There's more with us than with them. And the servant goes, what? Are you lost your mind? And he says, Lord, open his eyes. And as he opened his eyes, he saw the chariots of, of God's whole, uh, holistic and holy angels surrounded the Syrian empire or the Syrian army. God has it. He always has it. And he is the Lord of hosts forever. That's why Jesus comes back of the King of Kings and the Lord of hosts. He'll speak it. And in to all uh, madness and sin once and for all. Praise his name. Verse 3. I have declared the former things from the beginning. Only the I am that I am can declare the former things from the beginning. So as, as it says in Amos 3, 7. God does not do anything unless he tells his, his bond servants, the prophets, first. He's calling a shot. Similar to what Babe Ruth did. Now I'm going to hit it right in the left field seats. Throw me the ball. Here it goes. The only difference is... That's a man, and God is all-knowing. God is the beginning and the end. He has all things in his hand. And when you have the Lord in your heart, your soul, and your mind, no weapon ever formed can touch you. And you are always a majority with the Trinity inside you. Trust in his name. Be obedient to his precepts and commandments. For as I declared the former things from the beginning, they went forth from my mouth. I spoke it. And God says, Elohim, he puts his word above his name, and his name is the highest of all, the I am that I am. And I caused them to hear it. I caused them to listen to the ears, but they were, they, they were deaf to the ears. That's why God, and through Jesus, he who has an ear, let him hear. Especially the seven letters to the seven churches. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Ear. The Lord wants us to do more listening. Listen for the Lord, not seeing with the eyes. Faith is, is seeing, is believing with your heart of something that you can't see in the supernatural. 
And that's what he wants. And we need to do more listening. Listen to the Lord. Listen for his voice. Listen for his guidance. Meditate on him. And he will show you and he will speak to you. Suddenly I did, I did them and they came to pass. Verse 4. Because I knew that you were obstinate and your neck was of iron. So he knew that you're a stiff-necked people, that you are stubborn, and you didn't circumcise the heart. Yes, you went through the laws, but you, that you went through the traditions, but you didn't do what I wanted. God, from the beginning, from Genesis 1 and from the beginning of time, has always wanted to have an agape relationship with all of his creation. Two forms. Every single person ever born is a creation of Elohim, God the Father, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. But to be called sons or daughters of the Most High God and be called friend, as Abraham was to be called friend, first, become sons and daughters of the Most High is accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You're in the family, grafted in if you're a Gentile. No matter what your color, race, tribe, your tongue, you're all, we're all brothers and sisters of the Most High God. And if we do the will of the Lord and we glorify his name and fulfill the will of him uh, for him, for us and our life, he will call us friend like Abraham. That is an absolute blessing that the God of the universe loves us so much that he wants to call us son and daughter, welcoming us in his love for eternity. And then if we fulfill his will and do what he wants us to do, he will call us friend, to be a friend of the most high God. Praise his name. Because I knew that they were obstinate, you the stick not peak, and your brow was bronze. Your brow was bronze. That means it had been tested in the fire. He used this fire testing to test them. And that's why God puts us in the furnace. God puts us in the furnace to refine us, to get rid of the self, get rid of the ego, putting him first, getting his word down, understanding who he is, building that love relationship with him. We don't just become... Uh, we, we don't accept Jesus Christ one day and then the next day we're out doing the will of the Lord, preaching to all the world. No, it takes a wilderness period where you're tried by fire. You know, Jesus says, the world hated me before it hated you. It's not that if you'll be tried in my name, you will if you're following my will. Because if you're being tried in the fire, that means God has a mighty plan for you. And Satan is going to attack you because he, you are a threat to Satan. And that's why God is getting you prepared. He's preparing you through the furnace. And bronze is always an element throughout the scripture. And it's an idiom, a symbol always for fire, fire judgment. Fire, bronze is an element that can withstand fire. And that's what he's referring to, the fiery furnace that the, the three Hebrew boys had to go through. And in the, in the middle of those three, there was a fourth man, and that man was our Messiah, Jesus Christ. And we are doing these trials and tribulations and going through the furnace so that he can use us and mold us and shape us at, for his purpose and for his glory. Remember the Apostle Paul? He was had his Ph.D. In, uh, in Judaism. He had his Ph.D. in philosophy as being highly educated in the Greek. He, know, he knew the law. He knew the commandments. He studied under Galileo. But he got it all wrong. He got it intellectually up here, theology, instead of a love relationship. And when the Lord, Jesus Christ, showed himself to Paul, Saul at the time, then became Paul, he was transformed. He had salvation. He accepted the Lord, Jesus Christ, who was he was persecuting before. He saw him, and he put, gave his life to him, and he committed himself. Paul didn't go out preaching the next day. He went into Arabia for three years and had his own wilderness period where God tried him and tested him and shaped him and got to know an agape or a love relationship. And Paul became an absolute lover of God's word and loved the Lord with all his heart, his soul, and his mind. Then the Lord used him after he went through the fire and after he passed the wilderness period. So it's the past that we have to go through. And even from the beginning, I have declared it to you. Before it came to pass, I proclaimed it to you. In the beginning, I told you it was going to happen. And I proclaimed it, and it's going to happen. God is the only one that's outside of time that tells us things that are going to happen before they happen. And all through the scripture, Psalm 22, Jesus' resurrection, 30 miracles that Jesus did. 
the things that Jesus fulfilled in the Old Testament and his first coming. Everyone precise, being born in Bethlehem, riding in a donkey's colt on the exact day that was prophesied in Daniel 9. Ezekiel 4, actually the exact day that Israel became a nation, May 14, 1948. 19 years later, Nebuchadnezzar took on the city and the, and the, and the, and the temple. And that comes up to June 6, 1967, the exact date that Israel got control of the holy city again. Over and over and over, God is showing you, I'm going to do this, and he does it. And he does it, and he does it, and he does it, and he does it right to the letter. He put the, he put the Israelites into captivity exactly 70 years to the day because his word said it. You don't follow my Shemitahs. You, you were disobedient for 490 years. The punishment in the law is seven times for sin. Seven times 70 is 490 years. You miss 70 Shemitahs, so therefore the penalty is 70. And that would be 10 Jubilees. 10 is the number of commandments and precepts that we have to command or be judged on for his glory and for his purpose. Lest you should say my idols have done them and my carved image and molded image have commanded them. He's saying, I've told you the things before the beginning because I am that I am. Your carved images and your graven images, they're just, they're, they're just wood, barely enough to cook your meal, barely enough to keep you warm. They don't tell you the beginning from the end. They just stand there. Dagon, the god of the, Philip, the, the Philistines, when they got the Ark of the Covenant, because Uzzah tried to, tried to stop it from falling because they weren't being obedient to how to hold the Ark of the Covenant. So the Philistines went in there to their god of Dagon, and Dagon's arms fell down because the Most High had the word of God, the Ten Commandments, in the Ark of the Covenant. And they all they are is, is, is graven images. They're not real. Their arms fall off. They couldn't do anything because there is one God. That God is Elohim. Praise his name. Verse 6, you have heard, see all this, and will you not declare it? You've seen everything I told you was going to happen. And, and they, it has happened. Will you not declare it? Will you not see that I told Jeremiah that this would happen and would happen exactly to the day? And it has, it has happened. And you will not declare my glory. You will not fall into my heart. Are you stiff-necked? Necked? That's what he's saying to them. They're stiff-necked. They're just going through the motions with their words and not the love relationship and realizing he is the God of the universe. He has said everything he said has come true and we need to listen to him and be obedient to him. I have made you hear new things from the time. Remember, he says, I made you hear. We, with the eyes be, can, can fool us because the eyes are what penetrate our neurons in our brain to get us stimuli to go off the beaten track. That's why God likes to whisper. That's why God likes to talk to us. And Jesus says over and over, let him hear. He who has an ear, let him hear. Everyone who has an ear all over his glory nation, hear the word of the Lord. Meditate on the word of the Lord because he is the great I am that I am. They have created it now and now from the beginning. <clears throat> and before this day, you have not heard them. You have not heard them before this day that I tell you the things that are going to happen. And only I can tell those the only I can be outside of time and space to tell you when these are going to happen. Lest you should say, of course I knew them, relying on self. No, only the God of the universe knows, and only his prophets, his bondservants, the prophets that he shares with them, like Isaiah. Isaiah knew because he loved the Lord, and the Lord trusted Isaiah to be a prophet to the people. It was not a, good, a, a great gig to be a prophet of the old, of the old covenant. People didn't listen. They had hardened heart. They want to kill them. They wanted to kill the, the prophets because they didn't want to be obedient to the Lord. They wouldn't want to be convicted of their sin nature. And that's the way it is today in our churches in the United States of America. The, they don't want to know about sin. They, 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 they don't want to hear the truth of the Lord because they want to hear what they want to hear. God's word is whole. God's word is truth. You can't pick and choose which sins are good, which ones are bad. We are obedient to the Lord and all things for his word and all things because of our love relationship for him and his glory. That's why he tells us over and over, read my word. I am the living word. The living word is Jesus Christ. And that's why he wants us to know his word. That's how you get to know him. And when you have a love relationship that comes through his word, it changes you and you get intimate with him and you want more and more and more. 
That's why Jesus said at the, at, at the wall to the Samaritan woman, I give you the, the everlasting water that never will go away. You'll never thirst again. And she couldn't understand. Well, what are you talking about? This is, this is Jacob's well. It'll dry out. Not living water. Not the bread of life, which is Jesus Christ. Not the word of God. It will never wear out. Jesus in the word declares the heavens and the earth will come to an end, but my word will never. His word, the word of the Lord will stand tall. Surely you did not hear. Surely you did not know. For surely for long ago, your ear was not open. Their ears were not open to listen to what the Lord had to say. For I know that you would deal very treacherously. And we were called a transgressor from the womb. It means we were born into sin from the womb. Did Jesus through God the Father tells us in, this, in the word through Jeremiah that the heart is incurably wicked. We are born into sin nature. We are born away from the Lord. We're born as children or creations of God, but we're not children of the most high God until we humble ourselves and ask for forgiveness of our sins and saying, hey, we can't do it on our own, Lord. Take it from me. I trust in your son. I love your son. I repent and I follow your ways. You're obedient. I will be obedient to you. And you are my king of kings and Lord of hosts. That is salvation. The transgressor is the third level of the sin. Remember, we talk about sin. Everyone sins. It means in the Greek to miss the mark. Then there's trespass where we dangerously go over the line. It's the gray area that we get closer and closer. Transgression means violently go over the line and just do it. And then iniquity is the worst. Iniquity, we know in our heart that the Lord knows it's wrong. And we know that, that we know that the Lord knows it's wrong. And we do it anyway. That is the harden of heart. That is being uh, stiff-necked. That's not listening to the word of God. And he wants us to be obedient for our, 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 wells, for our well-being. For my name's sake, I will def defer my anger. He says, I will do it because of my name and my promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because my word is higher than my name. And I will do that because of my anger, my, co my commitment to David, my beloved, the Davidic covenant. Both those covenants the Lord gave to, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to David were unconditional, meaning they did not have to do anything, and God was going to fulfill them, and he was going to fulfill his word. And for my praise, I will restrain it from you, so I do not cut you off. Behold, I have refined you, but not as silver. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. That's why the Lord tests us. That's why we see Job. Job was tested. We see that Satan says, Job is upright and righteous to you, God, because you've put your hedge of protection around him. Take the hedge of protection around. Take his family. Take his money. Then see what he does. And Job stayed strong. That was his affliction, his fire in the furnace. That was Job walking through it. And he says, okay, now he hasn't, he hasn't denounced your name, but make him sick. Make him so sick that he wants to die. And Job persevered. Job didn't know that he was going through the trials and tribulations for the name of the Lord to build his faith. Remember it says in the, in the New Covenant, our faith builds our patience. Patience, per perseverance. And we need to have that. Build us up so that we can have the full armor of God, but mainly the word of God to go out and share his glory from east to west to north to south. Praise his name. Who should, for how should my name be profaned? You're profaning my name. You're calling my name, but you're not being obedient. You're profaning me. Again, in the Ten Commandments, it says, you shall not take the Lord's name in vain. That's not a vocabulary word. That's if you're called upon by the Lord. You don't work for him for vanity. You don't work for him for pride. You don't work for him for selfish reasons. You don't work for him for traditions. You don't work for him for sacrifices. You don't work for him for money. You do it out of love. You do it as a bond servant that chose, chose to serve him and chose to serve him out of love and not profane his name. Be obedient to him and never, never deny him. Praise his name. And I will not give my glory to another. The word here in glory is kavod. Kavod means the literal glory of God. That's how the name of his glory, this ministry, God's ministry, Elohim's ministry, he named it nine years before it even started. He named it the kavod, his glory. It's all about his essence and it's all about his glory. Listen to me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called. I am. Literally, I am he, I am the first, 
I am also the last, meaning I am that I am. I see the beginning. I see the end. I know how it's going to turn out. And all I want is for you rebellious people with a hardened heart to circumcise your heart, get rid of your stiff neck, open your ears and know who I am, not in tradition, not in just speaking the word, but love me with all your heart, your soul, and your mind, and I will take you into my hand. I will write your name on my hand, and I will never let you go. You will be with me for eternity. Verse 13, indeed, my hand has laid the foundations of the earth. It was I that created the heavens and the earth. Elohim laid it out with my hand, and my right hand stretched out the heavens. And when I call to them, they stand up together because I have control. I created all these things. One of the <clears throat> most uh, knowledgeable per people that uh, looks at space travel from NASA uh, saw that uh, you, you, right now the quickest way to get to a, the, the moon or Mars is to go through a, a NASA spaceship. But they, uh, th they've discovered that they can take the, the Earth's atmosphere or a level that is so thin and can be spread out or, or, or folded up is what this quantum physics uh, uh, expert was saying so that you could travel through space and time faster to get to a point. That's what, exactly what God says. I stretched out the heavens. He knew that from the beginning. Science is now just catching up with God's knowledge that, the, that, that is a thin. He rolls it up as a scroll. He stretches it out as a garment. He is being literal here. Verse 14, all of you assemble yourselves and hear. Assemble, the great assembly, and hear, listen, what I'm about to tell you. Who among you them who among them has declared these things? The Lord loves him, Jehovah loves him. He shall do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be against the Chaldeans. He's saying, I used the nation of the Chaldeans and Babylon through Nebuchadnezzar for my purpose, for my punishment. Now it's time for my people to go back. And the and the Chaldeans and the Babylonians, they mocked me when they took my utensils and used it in the banquet hall with a handwriting on the wall of Daniel. And he took, the, took them out in one day with the Medes and Persians, with Cyrus being called by the name of the Lord a hundred years before he was even born outside of time so that Cyrus would give the decree for those, his people, the elect, the, the, the remnant to go back to the city of Jerusalem, to his holy temple and rebuild it. Praise his name. I, even I, have spoken. Yes, I have called him. I have brought him, and his way will prosper. Yes, all the ways of the Lord will prosper if you're with him. The Lord said to me many years in a prophetic word, he said, my, my son, I give my precepts and commandments not because I'm a strict father. I do it out of love because I know how much sin hurts. That's why I ask you to be obedient to me. And he is so right. It, the things that you, we, we look at years past when you get closer to the Lord that we, we did in disobedience and sin nature, you look back at those and say, where was the pleasure from that? That all it does is create harm. It harms us. It harms other people. And the Lord's way, his precepts and commandments are out of love, not being a strict father, because he knows these sins are going to hurt us. That's why he gives it to us. That's why, like a regular a good father, you wouldn't teach you teach your, your son or daughter not to put their finger in the in the in the uh, electrical socket because they'll get shocked, they'll get hurt. You do that to keep them away from harm, to protect them. Not because you're strict; it's because of love. You love them and you want them to go well with them, and you want to see them with you forever and eternity. And you don't want your precious to be hurt. It breaks the heart of the Lord, even though even the wicked. The Lord says in the scripture, the Lord does not take the light and the death of the wicked because he was praying, he was hoping there by their free will that they would repent and come to know him as the true God. Like the thief on the cross at the last second, he acknowledged that Jesus Christ was the king of kings and the Lord of hosts. And as Jesus says, surely to this day, you'll be with me in paradise. It's repenting. No matter what we've done, the Lord is gracious if we repent with a true heart and give it to him and walk in his ways. He is faithful and true, and he will forgive us. Come near me, hear this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. He says, I haven't spoken in secret. I've told you my words through my prophets, through my scrolls. 
And as Amos 3, 7, the Lord does not do anything unless he tells his bondservants, his prophets first. The Lord is sharing it. He wants to see and let everyone show how glorious he is that only the I am that I am can show things before they happen outside of time and space. That is the one God. From that it was, I was there. And now the Jehovah Elohim and his spirit have sent me through his son, Jesus Christ. Thus says Jehovah, your redeemer. The redeemer is through the Trinity, but the Messiah, Jesus Christ, as God the Father has said, I will give my only begotten son to redeem the people to a holy God through my son on Calvary. The Holy One of Israel, I am the Jehovah, your Elohim who teaches you to profit, who leads you to by the ways you should go. My ways are higher than your ways. I know, I know all things. It's one thing you can't, the Lord can't do. He can't, he can't learn. He already knows all things. So his ways are the right way. We have to trust him because he knows all things. He can't be wrong and he can't learn. His ways are perfect. Oh, that you have heeded my commandments. That's why I wanted you, us to, to, to listen to his word and be obedient to his precepts and his commandments. Then your peace would have been like a river. He says, if you've obeyed me and loved me and had a relationship with me, your peace would be as the river. You wouldn't go through all these fiery trials and tribulations that were not for my name's sake. Yes, we go through fires and tribulations for two reasons. One, they're self-inflicted. Are we doing it because of sin nature? That's not God testing you. That's you getting it horribly wrong. We ask for forgiveness and not do it again. But God will do it, test us when it is for his purpose and for his glory that we're not sinning. Yes, we'll have to go those trials and tribulations for the namesake of, of the Messiah because Jesus said that will happen. It's not if you will go through trials and tribulations for my namesake. It, you will if you're being obedient to me. You will if you're following my will for your life because you are a threat to Satan and Satan will attack. And that's not from sin. That's because he doesn't want glory to happen. He doesn't want God's glory to shine in, in your life, to bring in other people from east to west to north to south. As Jesus said in the gospels before he went up, now I commission you to go from east to west to north to south to every creature and preach the gospel, the gospel of the, the, the way, the truth, and the life, the Messiah, that Jesus Christ is the only way, praise his name. That, then, you, then your peace would have been like a river and your righteousness like the waves of the sea, just the waves continuing in your righteousness. Your descendants also would have been like the sand. Not only is it helping you, but it's helping you the generations after you to know the will of the Lord and the commandments and teach your children the commandments and precepts of the Lord so it may go well with them. We need to have a spiritual revival from the fathers of all around the world to teach their children the way of the Lord. That is truth. We need to do that. Our, this generation here in America does not, the youth does not know what the Lord is all about. We need to teach him the love of the Lord and why he gives his precepts and commandments for our safety, to get to know him, to have a love relationship, and that he wants to be involved with everything in our life so it will go well for us with him. And the offspring of your body, like the grains of sand, his name would not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Verse 20, go forth from Babylon, flee from the Chaldeans with a voice of singing, declare, proclaim this, utter it to the ends of the earth. Say, the Jehovah has redeemed his servant Jacob, sending him back to the land, sending him back to the holy city, sending him back to build God's holy temple. Verse 21, and they did not thirst when he led them through the desert. They did not thirst because the living water that Moses struck of the rock was Jesus Christ. And that water you will have forever. That bread of life, which is Christ, will be forever. The manna. He caused the waters to flow from the rock from them. For them. He struck it. The rock is Christ. He's the one that gave them the living water in the, in, in, in the Torah. He is the one that was the manna that fed the Israelites. He also split the rock and the waters gushed out. This is a literal thing. He split the rock. In, in, the, in the Torah for the Israelites to drink the living water so that they never thirst. But he also split, split literally the rock, which is Jesus Christ, and the waters gushed out. Remember, when they pierced the side, 
Water and blood came out. Water gushed out. He did that for us. Splitting the rock, splitting, splitting Jesus Christ to die on the cross for us, for us to have eternal life through him and be with him forever. If we call on his name, repent and call him Lord of our lives. That's how far he's taken it. Praise his name. And we close out in Isaiah 48, verse 22. There is no peace, says the Jehovah, for the wicked. There will be no peace for the wicked. The wicked in the hardened heart, hardened of the ears, stiff neck, uncircumcised of the heart, hardened heart. There will not be never peace for when the white throne judgment comes. We always wonder why do the heathens and the people that are creating all this madness on the earth are murdering people, stealing from people, greed. How do they get away with it? Why do they get away with it, Lord? They won't get away with it. If they get to the get to the white throne judgment and they haven't accepted the name of the Lord and repented of those sins, judgment will be just and the judgment will come down. And as he says, for the wicked, they will have no peace. It will be everlasting fire into the lake of fire for eternity. We pray that Isaiah 48 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next time. God bless.